Hello everybody. Here we are again. We're back again with our um, Between Two Teachers session. My name is Consuelo Lara. I'm Madeline Cronenberg. And welcome to 2019. Yes, Happy New Year everybody. Well, um, I have something that I want to share. Um, I have, want to um, have submitted to the school board, as you know, I'm a trustee, and I submitted for the agenda a resolution that basically would uh, support or join the NAACP um, resolution on a, a, a moratorium on charter school expansion. And um, this has some history to it. Uh, it was in 2014. They passed that resolution 2016. Um, the, it was released. Then they had a, um, a task force put together and they did their research and more investigation came out with a 30, 40 page document. And after that, again, restated that they call for a moratorium because of the negative effect, effects it's having on schools and specifically people of color, communities of color, schools where there are more children of color. And, uh, and for them, it's a civil rights issue. And I totally agree with that. And one of the things, reasons that I think it's important for our district to pass something like this is when I look at Oakland Public Schools. What's happening there right now is gonna happen to us if we don't do something about it to at least slow this down. Now, I'm not under the impression that just because we pass it, okay, no more charters. Of course not. There are laws involved and our policymakers, our lawmakers have to step it up and change those laws, those loopholes that benefit the corporations. But what I feel this is important to do is it shows our values. Our values are that we support public education and that we recognize what these corporations are doing to our district and why they're doing it. They're not kidding anybody. This is not about education. This is about how much money they can make from, our, from the ADA that they get and how they're using it. And it's funny to hear some people come and nitpick at our budget, how are you spending it, but nobody pays any attention to how that ADA, when it goes to these corporations, how they're spending it. No one is doing that. And a lot of that is because of the way the laws are set up. It blocks any investigation into that. So they're shady, unscrupulous, and very greedy. And so we need to pass this uh, resolution to show that it's, it's not okay with us. This is not okay. So um, I'll let you know more about it. We're pushing for this. And I also challenge like city hall, city councils, to also pass something similar, that they support this issue and they, that they see um, a moratorium on the expansion as very important for our community. So I would like to see more organizations say they support this, support this idea because they also have those values for public education. Okay, so that's the one big one that I wanted to talk about. And the second one was, oh, the, fair. the education fair. So, um, I haven't known a lot about this. I haven't ever attended one, but I believe it's funded by Mr. Chamberlain organization and that it was been put on in the past to highlight, showcase all the wonderful charter schools there are uh, in the district and inviting uh, parents and because, you know, we know they have this stellar um, marketing and publicity departments, that's the money can buy, and they give out gift bags, etc., etc. And I believe last year, um, the traditional schools were invited, and then this year, again, everybody's excited about going, but one principal I know said, you know, he was going to bring the band and this, and showcase all of these wonderful things and their robotics, and they were told, nope, we have more parameters. Now that's just uh, pamphlets and pictures and things like that. So supposedly to equal, um, you know, all of the presentations. So I don't know. Again, sounds kind of shady to me. Personally, I'm not going to go because I know the intent of it. And uh, yeah, there's my perspective. 
Thank you. So thank Evan. you, and thank you for leading on the charge to support the NAACP. The NAACP is the major organization in the United States that's fighting for civil rights today. And we're uh, filming this right now on MLK Weekend. So it just speaks to me so strongly that every elected official in the state of California should have to take a stand on whether they are with the NAACP or not with the NAACP. I think it's Good that point. simple. And I would like to see all of our cities, our supervisors in, in county government, our uh, elected officials at every level have the opportunity to endorse or choose not to endorse the NAACP's decision to, to uh, basically put a moratorium on charter expansion in the United States until things are looked at in a fair way. Right now, they are not fair, and the expansion of charter schools is paid for by our most vulnerable children, children of color who are in our traditional public schools. This is very much the reason that we have 30,000 teachers on strike in Los Angeles today. And Los Angeles has lost, loses $600 million a year to charter schools. Oh my. It's, it's a big district and it, those, it, there are big costs. Throughout the country, people are looking at this. In New York City right now, there is a, uh, a, a district within the city that has put up for vote a moratorium, basically backing the NAACP's moratorium on charter schools for their district. Because the co-locations, which we're about to be looking at in West Contra Costa, um, and which have become rampant in, uh, in this part of the city, in Brooklyn, are something that they cannot live with anymore, as well as the draining of funds, right? And in, in, uh, I was uh, uh, noticing today, and I'm going to post this on, on my uh, Facebook, where they talk about how much money Mr. Butner, the uh, superintendent of L.A., makes. Oh. He makes $355,000 yes. a year. And then in addition to his salary, which, and he is a, very wealthy man who could really just uh, take a dollar and put the rest back in if he wanted to. Um, but in addition to him, each of the charter uh, networks that operate in, in the city, of, in every, everywhere, also have CEOs that are paid upwards of uh, $200,000. So these are incredibly, you wonder where the money goes the money it goes legally. There's nothing illegal about this because this is the way the laws were set up. The money goes to very high paid uh, executives that are involved in each of these organizations. We have to get back to remembering the reason for charter schools was to allow teachers to be innovative. That has been completely stripped away. We no longer have that as the, the point. Our conversation should just be about great teaching and ways we can support great teaching. And here we are between two teachers, and what are we talking about? We're talking about the politics of charter schools, because it turns out that's the most important thing for, the, for our children. Uh, I want to commend our new superintendent of instruction, Mr. Thurman, for going down to LA to work on the, on the strike. I do hope that they come to a conclusion, but I hope that in addition to finding money within their own budget, they make a real stand and that Mr. Garcetti gets the Los Angeles School Board, the Los Angeles City Council to take a stand against charter yeah. uh, expansion and to support the NAACP resolution. I hope that the mayor of San Diego does the same thing. I hope that London Breed does the same thing in San Francisco. Everyone needs to get behind it and then just hand it to, to Governor Newsom to get behind it and then make it so that it's impossible for our legislators to not recognize that this is what California needs. I thought the demonstration the other day in front of the California Charter School Association you see that? No, I didn't yes. tell me about day it. Day two, they, they marched to the California Charter School Association oh. and said, this is our problem. Oh, 
and so it is. <laughs> and the California Charter School Association said, no, we are, we are in agreement with you. We, uh, you know, we, uh, the state needs more funding. If the state, you know, whether the state gives more funding or not, the California Charter School Association drains, exists, at, to, part of its existence is to drain funding from traditional schools to the point that they are no longer competitive and they are they fall into into bankruptcy their own infograph the draining of the schools absolutely right? absolutely, absolutely shows that so it's not like they don't know it yeah so it's we do need more funding i'm happy to have anybody support extra funding for all of our schools but we must never relinquish the the moral fact that the existence of charter schools and the way the charter school law has been written and is being uh, uh, is operating is absolutely draining resources from our children and it is the reason for this strike the major reason the money is not there and there is a strike in, in Los Angeles and that there are conversations across the country and soon the next one after Los Angeles is going to be Oakland where today we understand there is yet another wildcat strike right from the um, uh, of the teachers in Oakland they have as Consuelo referred to, they have major economic problems. They are all stemming from the fact that they have uh, too many charter schools. And the charter schools that they have have drained the funds from their, um, from their traditional schools. And so, there we are. It's a time of, uh, on, on, this, on this MLK weekend, this is the time to continue the fight. Yeah, and I, one thing I forgot to say, on December the 21st, the UTA, UTLA uh, president and uh, the board had a, a press conference where they called for a moratorium on charters. And they didn't have a document. I wish they had done something like that that I could print out. But they, um, so that was on, they came out with that announcement on December the 21st. On December the 28th, the NAACP published a letter that said, we support LA's moratorium on... So this, you know, this is getting going and it is a, totally a civil rights issue and we need to recognize it and get behind it as well. And everyone in the state needs to do it. So that's what, what we just need to do. So Concilio, you can speak to the Concilio Latino. Oh yeah, Latino. so the Concilio Latino this morning voted unanimously to endorse and support the NAACP's uh, moratorium. So we'll be putting that out as well. So, so they are the leaders the and the rest of the state can follow Concilio Latino yes. and West Contra Costa. Exactly, exactly. In, in endorsing this and making it so that th this is how you make a change. This law, as it exists, hurts our children and is absolutely the opposite of civil rights legislation. And it needs to be changed. And there needs to be a moratorium. Great, thank you. What, what, real quick, our cameraman, what were the details of today's strike in, or wildcat strike? Yes, it was a wildcat strike. Um, it was uh, planned at the Oakland uh, School District. It was a uh, uh, sick out, ah. specifically. And uh, one well, of the things they did after that was they actually uh, had a march on uh, Broadway Street. Oh, okay. And it's a one day. It was a one day. It was thing. just a one day thing. Okay. I don't think it's the official strike yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a movement, everybody. So we're, we're going to win this thing. We're going to win it. Yeah. We're going to win it. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you next time. We're going to win this. There you go. <laughs>